the first epistle to the Thessalonians, the introduction. The Apostle Paul joined in his salutation by Silvanus and Timothy and with specific mention of his name again later in the epistle. Early sources in church history that attribute this letter to Paul include Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, and Irenaeus. The city of Thessalonica. It was the capital and largest city of the Roman province of Macedonia. Located on the Ignatian Way, a major road from Rome to the eastern provinces. The city served as center of trade and commerce. Today it is known as Thessaloniki or Salonica. The church at Thessalonica. The establishment of the church is recorded in Acts 17, 1-9. On his second missionary journey, Paul and his companions, Silas and Timothy, had just left Philippi and passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia to arrive at Thessalonica. As was his custom, Paul immediately located the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews for three Sabbaths concerning Jesus Christ. While some of them were persuaded, including a great number of devout Greeks and leading women, the unbelieving Jews became jealous and created an uproar in the city. Therefore it became necessary to send Paul and Silas away secretly by night to Berea. Despite such ominous beginnings, a strong church was established in Thessalonica, mostly Gentile. Its members included Jason, Aristarchus, and Secundus. First Thessalonians is considered one of Paul's earliest epistles, if not the first. From the letter itself and the record of Paul's travels in Acts, it appears that Paul wrote this letter soon after arriving in Corinth on his second journey. This would put it somewhere around 52 A.D. The abrupt departure from Thessalonica so soon after the beginning of the church naturally left Paul anxious about the condition of the brethren. When Timothy joined Paul at Athens, his concern prompted Paul to send Timothy at once back to Thessalonica to encourage and ground the new disciples in the faith and to learn how they were enduring persecution. When Timothy returned to Paul in Corinth, the news was most encouraging. Despite persecution, they had remained strong and even proved themselves to be an example to others. Yet, as with any young church, they needed further instruction concerning holy living. They also needed to be reassured that their loved ones who died in Christ would not miss out on the blessings involving the coming of our Lord. This book is unique in that every chapter ends with a reference to the second coming of Christ. With his emphasis on steadfastness and holy living, an appropriate theme might be holiness in view of the coming of Christ.